Now, what we want to do is we want to talk about experiencing the changed heart. Our hearts need to be changed. There's no question about it. But how does God change our hearts? How do we experience the changed heart? We need to understand the desperate condition of our heart. And God tells us the bad news so that the good news will be that much better. God changes our hearts from the inside out. Makes sense, doesn't it? Changes our lives from the inside out. Man wants to work on behaviors again. God cuts through all that and wants to work uh, at our heart. That's where renewal begins. A changed heart comes primarily through two ways. Conversion, being born again, being saved, becoming a believer, receiving Christ, however you want to phrase it, I'll use the term conversion. God converts us from what we were to something brand new. Secondly, after conversion, most people need to come to the point of consecration when they understand more of the Lordship of Christ. That brings about a further change. So let's talk about that. Oswald Chambers said, there is only one being who can satisfy the lasting, aching abyss of the human heart, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a God-shaped vacuum in our heart. Ecclesiastes 3.10 says, God has planted eternity in man's heart. And only eternity can fill it. Only the eternal God can fill it. So we talked about conversion, what it is, how important it is. But remember, in our other lecture, we talked about the heart having three dimensions to it, the intellectual, the volitional, and the emotional. When we talk about conversion, it has to happen in all three of those areas because those form the heart. Let me explain. Conversion begins with the intellectual dimension of the heart. In other words, there needs to be a factual and a positive recognition of the truth of the gospel. You don't come into the, to the kingdom of heaven head first, but you have to have facts and information and that comes through the intellect, which is a dimension of the heart. Remember that. So it starts there. But there are many people that have an intellectual conversion, but they don't have a spiritual conversion. They say, well, I believe that Jesus lived and died and rose again. But the Bible says the devils believe and they tremble. They're not saved. And I, I have a real concern. There are many people even in our churches that have only had an intellectual conversion. They've agreed to certain propositional truth. Somebody says, do you believe this and this? I believe, I believe, I believe. There's another dimension. And that's an emotional division, uh, dimension. And that's the drawing of our heart to the person and work of Christ. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He draws us to the truth concerning Christ in a compelling way. And I've had many people say, you know, I, I heard this, I knew it, but now I feel myself, something stirring within me, and I'm being drawn to the person of Christ. That's the emotional. But people can have an emotional conversion. They can go to a meeting, there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of hype, and there's a lot of excitement going, and they can leave there and they feel better, they feel wonderful, and they think they've been converted, and then the emotions subside and they wonder. No, there has to be another dimension. That's what the scripture calls the volitional. That's any personal decision in response to the truth about the person and work of Jesus Christ. So when you have somebody that begins to understand who Jesus is, that's wonderful. Starts there. Got to have some facts, right? But it doesn't stop there. Then they find and sense a, a stirring in their heart being drawn 
to this Jesus that they have heard about and know something about. That's the Spirit of God working, awakening that desire, creating. And then they come to a point and they say, yes, I want to receive Christ as my Savior. And when those three things come together, you have a genuine conversion. Otherwise, you can have a psychological conversion. Doesn't last. You can have an emotional conversion. Doesn't last. But when you have those three dimensions coming together, you have a conversion that takes place in the heart and you receive a new heart. Let me tell you, I could tell you several stories, but let me tell you about one man that I had the privilege of seeing all three dimensions come together. He was a medical doctor in our town. In fact, he was a heart doctor, kind of interesting. But he was a well-known physician in our community. I had heard about him, but I didn't know him. But one night about two o'clock in the morning, I got a call from a friend of mine saying his nephew had been killed and would I go to the home with him to comfort the family. We arrived at the home about two o'clock in the morning and the wife was there, two small children, and her father was there who was this doctor and his wife. And it was sad beyond belief because it had happened on their fifth wedding anniversary. They had gone out for a wonderful dinner, had a great time together, came home after celebrating, and they got into an argument. The husband left by himself, got drunk, and on the way home, crashed into a bridge and was killed on their fifth wedding anniversary. So here's Dr. Bowman, his wife, the wife of the man who had been killed, their two little children. And I began to talk to them and try to bring some comfort to the situation. And, and I had the funeral. None of them were believers. I had the funeral service for them, shared Christ at the funeral, explained the gospel. But shortly after that, I had to make a trip to the Philippines. I was on a mission board and I had to go to the Philippines to deal with some problems that had arisen there. And I needed to get some shots before I went, some vaccinations. And I thought, well, I'll go to this doctor. I called him and I reminded him who I was and I went to uh, his office. And uh, he asked me what, what I was doing. And I said, oh, I'm going to the Philippines. He said, I've never been there. I said, oh, you ought to go with me. But I was just kidding. He said, are you serious? I said, no. <laughs> I said, I'm not serious. I said, it wouldn't work. I'm going on business. I'm going to be in meetings, a short trip and all. And he said, uh, I want to go. I said, you can't go. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. And I went home. And I said, you couldn't get your ticket. You couldn't get the passport, all the paperwork you need. I went home, sometime later he called me on the phone and he said, uh, I've got everything in order, I want to go with you. I didn't even know the man hardly. And it was at the last minute, I couldn't tell the people on the field that I, he was coming with me. We didn't have cell phones or internet in those days. Long story short, we got on the plane in San Francisco Here's this medical doctor that I just didn't know at all. And all the way to the Philippines, a long flight, 12, 15 hours, we didn't sleep. He had intellectual question after question after question. How do you know the Bible is true? How do you know Jesus Christ is the only way? What about those who have never heard? What about science in the Bible? We talked, talked through the night. Just bombarded me with questions. But I sensed the Spirit of God working in the man's life. He was drawn. He wasn't just arguing. He wanted to know. But something was happening. 
So I explained the gospel to him repeatedly on the trip and over and over who Jesus is, what Jesus had done, how to be saved, how to come to know the Lord. Didn't press him for a response. There wasn't any on the plane. We got out of the plane, the missionaries met us, and uh, I was trying to get to the missionaries to tell them, I don't know who this guy is, but he's not a believer, and he's tagged along with me, and he's here, and pray for him. But I didn't have a chance to get the missionaries alone. We went out to breakfast, and one of the missionaries looked at him and said, Doc, when did you come to know the Lord? I thought, uh-oh, this is going to be interesting. He said, oh, about six hours ago at 30,000 feet, I gave my life to Christ. I received him as my Savior. And I saw those three things come together. He had the facts. He had his intellectual questions answered. The Spirit of God was mightily at work in his life, and he made that decision. I had the privilege of baptizing him, leading his whole family to Christ, his daughter, grandchildren, other daughter and son-in-law. And God did a mighty work and he walked with God. But that's what I mean, a genuine conversion, stayed strong. And even while he was in the Philippines, God used him in a marvelous way there. I won't get into that story. But all that to say, conversion takes place in the heart. If the heart doesn't change, nothing changes. It's all about the heart. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.